Hi everybody, and welcome back to my channel. I've kind of been gone for a while, and I'm not going to get into that story. But then if you're new here, thank you for joining me today. So, I missed my peoples, and I just want to jump back into life. I'm not going to sit around and feel sorry for myself. So, I'm sorry that I've been in my channel for a while, but I'm hoping to be up and running again. Um, on that note, I am an artist and interior designer by day and uh, chef and bartender by night. So I found a little Zen zone. I do a lot of painting and I do acrylic pours and a lot of drawings and uh, work with some watercolor. So on that note, I wanted to show you guys some techniques and find a nice happy place for you guys. It's really fun to watch. It's fun to engage and it's fun to learn something, kind of do-it-yourself paintings and stuff, and I want to teach you guys how to do certain things and make your own paintings for gifts or coffee mugs and stuff like that. I love do-it-yourself kind of stuff. It's really a lot of fun, and um, you're going to really like it. I want to teach you the things that I learned along the way and that I learned from when I was in college. And when I paint, I have a lot of, lot, a lot of different techniques and I use some of the craziest little items to do that stuff with. So let's get started. And welcome back again to my channel. And I'm happy to have you. So I'm sorry I abandoned you guys for a while once again. So anyway, moving on. Okay, so what this is, is I've been working on a painting for my granddaughter's 16th birthday. And I'm getting ready to put the glaze on it. Now this painting is already finished. And uh, from now on, I will uh, show you the pores and the paintings along the way. I didn't actually record this when I made it, so I won't be able to show you that. But I do have some really unique techniques and things that I like to do after I even make the painting and uh, get ready to glaze it. Okay, well, let's get started, everybody. I'm getting ready to do this pour, and I'll explain along the way as I do it. I realized my sign said earless me because the F was cut off, but eh, you guys get it. Okay, so uh, what I want you guys to know, first of all, like I said before, I didn't actually record me painting this, and I feel bad now because that would have been really fun to watch. Secondly, um, the horse is actually a sticker that I got at Walmart for like 98 cents, and I've never done an acrylic pour or glazing over a sticker before. But this was so my granddaughter, and I thought I'd give it a try. And if it doesn't work out, then that's okay. I'll make another one because it's inexpensive, simple, and a lot of fun. And before I paint anything, even glazing or painting, I use this to actually, this is one of my little tricks, to get the dust off certain things and even uh, around there, around the bins. And then I wait a second for uh, the other dust to settle before I even get started again. And when you're glazing, not painting, but glazing, you should have a level to make sure that uh, all the edges are level. And I've already checked this once before because you can't just check one spot. You really should move it around because that glaze, you want it to be um, spread out and even and not too thick in a corner or whatever. And even though that I, I painted this already, it's still kind of porous. A lot of surfaces are. Um, so a ceiling is just definitely recommended. In certain woods with open grains such as oak or walnut, um, they will allow air to escape, causing a lot of bubbles in your paint when you're done uh, glazing. So you don't want that either. And if you do get some air bubbles, I always use this uh, kitchen torch. And it's pretty inexpensive, and it's, it also brings out cells when you, can, uh, when you use your dimethicone, which is a silicone, when you do the painting itself. So, but this is also good for just, like I said, getting air bubbles out. You don't want to burn the paint, so you want to hold this thing up high. And I will be using that later, and I'll show you how that works when you glaze. Um, also, everything is different, some fabrics to wood to different uh, things that you paint on. And so, if you buy a box of glaze, like today I'm using a glaze that's used for countertops, and you can buy, there's so many different kinds of glazes and resins and stuff out there. And a lot of times I just use a spray, like I'll have a gloss spray or, you know, and just in the regular paint section. And, and that works good too, but sometimes I really want that high gloss shine. 
And uh, so that's when you have to get the resin or whatever and the glaze coats. And um, let's get started. Okay, so what I had to do was um, I turned off the camera and I went to go um, measure and pour and stir my resin. So you have your resin and your hardener and they are poured in equal parts into like a clean, separate, unwaxed, disposable plastic cups or paper cups or whatever. And and it's a one-to-one -one ratio, but the uh, you have to really be careful when you measure this to make sure it's exactly measured. And I'm doing it in a smaller, this is my mix here, I'm doing a small mix, and I've never really done a really small mix before. Um, I've done a really big country western bar top, and we actually routed out holes in the top and um, put in bullets and belt buckles and actually some whips. And it was really cool. And then I had the Amish come by and, and help me. And we, oops, sorry about the swing. I got to figure out this camera angle here. Anyway, um, and that was really fun. That was a really nice project. Also, this stuff gets really, really warm. And it takes about 12 minutes of mixing time. And as you can see, you're going to have air bubbles in here. And uh, they will go away naturally, but you have to help it along. You have about 15 to 20 minutes of work time once you pour this before it dries and starts to cure. And actually, you can't pour a second coat on. You have to wait at least 48 hours for, for that. Well, at least four to five hours is what I meant, four to eight, five to eight hours before you pour your second pour. But I'm only going to do one pour with this. So what I meant earlier by helping it along, these little air bubbles in here, I hope you can see that and see. Um, that's where the torch comes in and uh, we'll work with that so also like I said this is a sticker and I've never done that before either and we're gonna try here and um, do this small area and pour this glaze on there and see what happens and and then of course I will videotape it when it's finished and then put the videos together um, I had an art channel, I have an art channel, and um, I've been doing interior design since the eight, late 80s. I graduated from college in 1996, and um, been doing a lot of interior design and landscaping and stuff like that, but I found my niche to really be more of painting. I like painting trees and horses and cheetahs, and I work a little bit with watercolor, but not too much. I'm mainly an acrylic person. Um, okay, so let's get started here and see how this turns out. Ooh, I hope it turns out good. My granddaughter is going to love it. Okay. Oh, and let me get my tools. Hang on one second. I got prepared ahead of time. Be right back, peoples. Okay. Um, you need your little plastic scrapey and then my other stir stick and then a brush. A throwaway brush for the side. You can do some cleanup with rubbing alcohol around your surfaces, but okay. Here we go, everybody. Let's give it a whirl. I usually do a lot of times when I do a p acrylic pour, I'll do a flip cup, and flip cup means you hold it like this and you put the cup on like this, and then you flip it over. So I'm not sure if I want to do that or if I just want to pour, but I think I will. I think I'll try an acrylic pour instead of pouring slowly from the corners. Okay, I hope this works, everybody. Let's go pray with me, everybody. One, two, three. Woo -wee. Okay, let's see here. Oh, boy. I'm excited. It's going to look so good. Oh, look at that. Oh, that looks nice already. See, and I'm going to pick up some stuff on the sides. I want to try to get that glazing. It will level itself off. You don't have to tip it um, like I have to tip some of my paintings um, to give different designs and stuff. I've got to work around my camera here. This is uh, new to me and I'm in a small spot here and the camera angle is different for me. I'm gonna hang in there with me everybody. We'll get her done, son. Okay, put that cup down now. Play with this a little bit. Get that going. Make sure that's covered. 
You do have a little bit of working time, but I want to uh, see, I don't want to get back here without bumping my camera. And I bumped it, sorry. Yeah, I'll have to figure that out. I gotta figure something out with that. I can't have you guys waving and bouncing all over the place. <laughs> Okay, yeah, sorry, I don't mean to get quiet on everybody. I'm just kind of focused on this. All right, let's flip this back around and um, let's get the plastic uh, scraper out. Okay, now they want you to uh, try to scrape it and level it off a little. They said go in one direction. So I'm so used to using a very large, like, car squeegee. <laughs> for very large surfaces so and uh, there's kind of these weird built-in level things that I use and then I remove the level thing and then I take the blowtorch to it to get the bubbles out so actually I think I think this is going to turn out pretty good like I said I'm just not used to doing these smaller surfaces this is a very small one and don't forget the sticker y'all because Never done a sticker before, and when I did the bullets and the uh, all that uh, the whips and all that other stuff that I put in that cowboy bar thing, it uh, we routed out the holes to make them fit, and they were sunk down in there, and then the you know the resin went down in there. I do see. Let me take you guys down there. I do see. Um, see what the little edging is right here. I can see that little, those little bubbles right there. Um, I can't point at it. Right here. So you can see that it's a, uh, a sticker. But that's okay. Like I said, it's for my granddaughter and she's going to love it. And now I'm going to, well, I'm going to put you guys back here and I'm going to get the old blowtorch out. Let's, I'll show you how that works. Okay, like I said, this is a kitchen torch. And um, turn it on. I'm not making creme brulee here, but I want to get me bubbles out. Now, I might have to hold the torch up higher than the camera, but what I'm going to be doing, let me turn that back off, is holding it up high and going like this in fast circle motions, and that's going to pop any bubbles that I might have that I might be getting. Okay. Ready, guys? Here we go, people. Let's bust them bubbles. This is actually a really fun tool when you are doing our acrylic pores because you can create cells and what I mean by cells and lacing is, is if you look at the white paint that I have there it uh, has a, oh sorry everybody it has um, oh there's a fire I had to move my cup what I mean by that's all that little lacing and everything that's where that little fire is or where the little uh, white bubbles Sorry, I'm messing up everything because I don't have the right camera angle. And I'm bumping things and I'm working with new stuff. So, all right. Well, I don't want to burn this painting because I can see it smoking a little. And I don't want anything to happen like that. And we'll let it drip. And then what you do is actually you need to, um, I can see here where it is on the edge there. I'm going to pour that over there. The, uh, most of the bubbles will self-level themselves. But I can see on the edge. It needed a little help. I'm concerned thinking that it's a possibility that that sticker could kind of pop up out of there. Okay, well, I'm going to let that go now. Throw this brush and stuff away. I feel like I've got a lot of resin left over down there. I hate that I'm wasting it, but I don't have a choice. There's nothing I can do about that. I'll just make a smaller concoction next time. I did a half cup to the half cup. And I think that that was way too much for this tiny little painting. But, uh, 
I think it'll be just fine. And if it isn't, guess what we'll do, everybody? We will go back to the beginning and we will take the sticker off. We will sand it down a little bit. And then we will pour a, uh, a gloss medium on top and let that dry. And then we will, um, after we do that, then we'll go ahead and uh, let that dry. And we'll go ahead and uh, put a, gloss, a glossier coat on it and let it dry and it'll be just fine. I hope we don't have to go through all that, but guess what? These are all experiments, and I'm having fun doing it, and we're going to learn lots of stuff. I want, I want to learn lots of stuff, and I want you guys to go along with me. Let's have some fun. All right, everybody, let me sign off for now, and then I'll let that dry and get another video together when it's dry and put them together.